Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms. Today we're going to do a little bit of work on leveling and setting up the mill. See if I can break down some of the problems I've been having. Then we're going to mill this log. And then we're going to walk through my plan of how I'm going to get this mill in and out of my building. Because there's some logistical issues that I've got to work through. And I thought I had a plan and now I'm not sure if it's going to work. And so I want to get your feedback. I want to put it on video and just walk through it. So if you guys follow the channel, the way I do things around here is I do my troubleshooting of my plans and my processes and my equipment live, you know, unscripted. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know I have a little bit of a problem right now. We'll start there. So this was the second log I've milled since adding the Woodlander trailer to my mill. And I've noticed a little bit of an issue with leveling, and it's really probably just a learning curve. But if I'm going through a learning curve, then maybe some of you guys are too, or you might if you've got this mill. So, in the past, I never had any problems with this mill at all, but I didn't move it. I, I bolted it down to a rigid frame. And now that it's on a trailer, anytime it's moved, you're going to have to re-level. So I leveled the mill without any weight on it, then I put a log on it and cut, and I noticed I had a little bit of a, a drop-off at that end of the mill down there. So then I re-leveled the mill, put this log on it, and made one cut, and then stopped. Now I come back down here, and my mill is not quite level. And I know you guys are going to say it's sinking into the ground, and that could be a little bit of it, but I think this ground's also pretty rock solid. So I don't think that's the main issue. The biggest problem, I think, is this, this frame I would call semi-rigid. So, it can tweak just a little bit. It's bolted together in sections that overlap the trailer frame and the sawmill frame. And it's got a little bit of flexibility in it, which I think is required. It's also got six leveling jacks in, around the mill so I can level it out. Whenever I leveled it, the middle seemed like... It needed to come down just a tiny bit and we lifted the jacks off the ground and that middle still didn't go down but it was really close then we set the log on and it, it kind of sunk in so my interpretation and if you guys have a mill you can tell me otherwise my interpretation is that when you set your mill up in a new location you should set a log on before leveling the mill so it, let me show you what I've got right now I never know how well that's going to come through on camera, but if I lift on this handle here, it goes up and down. So I've got two wheels that are under pressure and then two that aren't, and I'll show you why. So we've got our level here, and one thing I'm definitely going to invest in, but I just haven't got to it yet, is I'm going to get like a 10 foot level or at least eight foot because this six foot only hits two bunks and i'd like to hit three so right now we are level this direction now i put it on here the other direction and we're almost level at this end side to side Now I come to right here, and side to side, this side of the trailer needs to come up half to three quarters of an inch. So this jack is too low. Before I make an adjustment, let me check it in every direction. Okay, we're now level in this spot. We're level here. Maybe just slightly low right here, but let's see how it looks going across. I think we need to raise that corner just a little bit. To me, I think what's going to happen over time is as I move the mill and take it on location, I'm gonna get a routine down where this takes me 
10, 15 minutes at the most to set a log on it, level it out, and then just work the rest of the time I'm there. And that's not that big of a trade-off to say I now have mobility, that it just a little bit of setup time. That came out much better. There was one spot where I could just barely feel a little wiggle, but dramatically better. Not something I would have just noticed running it. So let's get this thing cut up. Now let's see if you guys think my plan will work for relocating the mill into the building. Last two things I want to say before I get started is there is a breeze blowing in my face. I know from past experience that's going to get that sawdust all over me. And I don't want to deal with it, especially not when I'm sweaty like this. So I'm going to wear my mowing with a breeze helmet. You know, keep myself from breathing in that sawdust. The other thing is just letting you know what we're doing with this lumber. This is for the pergola that I tried to build last week and realized I didn't have enough lumber for. Now we're going to finally get the rest of those beams milled up. So I need six by sixes at least 12 foot long. I'm going to try this version that has the hard hat, not because I need a hard hat for running the mill, but because the air comes in in a different spot, comes in more towards the back of your head instead of up by your forehead, and I want to see how good of a job that does. I'm cutting off a really thick slab just because I want to get straight down to that six inch height and my normal next cut would have been about eight inches. So I'll have a, a really thick slab there and then it's got a knot on the top and that knot bottomed out in the throat. So I've got to cut that before I can finish this cut. About to storm on us. Hopefully we can get this done. So I probably look like a real doofus with this thing on. But here's the truth of it. My arms... My arms and my shirt are all covered in sawdust. See if you can see it right there. And without wearing a mask of some kind, you're just going to breathe all that. My whole life I've said, who cares? Just breathe it. Like. I'm not going to be a crybaby about it. Well, you start to get a little older, you start to have trouble breathing, wake up coughing all the time, say maybe I ought to quit breathing all that.
You know, what a blessing it is to be out here in this beautiful weather. It's about to storm on us, but it's just gorgeous out here. The sky, the colors, the pond, the wood. Such a blessing to be able to be out here doing what I'm doing, doing what I love doing, and that this is my job. And just learning and making mistakes in front of you guys and take it or leave it, it is what it is. But I've got a long learning curve to go on this mill. I've only had it for a few months and I'm trying to, every time I do something, pay attention. What changes, what's different, what works and what doesn't. Read your comments, you know, read other people on, on forums and Facebook groups about milling and just get better as I go. But right now I've got a task in front of me because this is a trailer where I can hook onto it and take it somewhere and mill. Got the idea of how to level it out, but I want to store it in my building. And 90% of the time, I'll be up there in the Quonset hut cutting logs. Now, if you guys are familiar with this channel, you've seen the way this fits in my mill. Well, the actual, or in my building, but the actual mill is 20 foot long. The building is 30 foot wide. Sounds like a big difference. When you split that, you got five foot on each side, room to comfortably walk around it. But then we've got the tongue that sticks out another three foot. So that cuts it down to 23 foot in a 30 foot building, seven foot extra, three and a half on each side. Enough room to comfortably have it in there and work around it. But now, how do I get it in there? Building's like a tunnel this way. How do I get it in there crossways? So one option is the building's 60 foot long. I could just drive it in there and have it against one wall. But if you think about a 30 foot building, the mill head is like five feet wide and then you need some room behind the mill head to get around when you need to work. And I hang my sawdust bucket back there. I'm thinking the mill is going to take up like eight feet. You're not going to have it scraping the wall. That leaves 22 feet to get in there and get a log turned and up on it. I think putting it in there long ways would be easy, but getting logs on it would all of a sudden be harder every time I mill. It's extra work. And it might not even be doable depending on a 16 foot log. I don't know if you can, the skid steer pivots so tight, I might be able to do it. The only way to know is to find out and to go try it. But the other alternative is I could come in from the side, just pick the sawmill up with the skid steer, carry it up there and set it exactly where I want it. Seems like the perfect plan. I even grabbed an accessory for the skid steer to help with moving this from the side. But now as I'm getting ready to do it, I'm concerned, what if that damages the mill? So let's take a look at the way this thing's put together. Okay. I need to look up the exact weight of the sawmill. I'm thinking it's with the trailer, it's at least a thousand, if not 1500 pounds. So I'm going to guess 1500. And you look at the way it's constructed. This is pretty heavy gauge material here that comes down and angles in on both sides. And my concern is if I pick 1500 pounds up with pallet forks lifting under this, is that going to bend or damage the mill in any way? Is picking it up from the middle going to cause any problems with the ends wanting to sag? You know, obviously I don't want to tear something up. I'm going to read all of your comments. I may call Woodland Mills customer service and just see if they have an opinion. It's not something they need to have an opinion on, but I can ask. And then I'm going to have a couple of uh, people come over and help me look at it and give me suggestions. Now my idea was to take where these cross beams are and put stake pockets, weld stake pockets onto these cross beams so that I can just drive my forks into that and lift with this support right here. Now these don't stick down as much as this. So to do that, I'd have to build this down just a little bit and then put my stake pockets right on here in the two mi middle cross beams. The other possibility is I could add some more reinforcement to the frame underneath, put a couple of long ways pieces and then put my stake pockets on and then it's gonna be more stabilized, but it, I think it needs a little bit of flex to be able to level it on location. The final option I have is I could back the sawmill into the Quonset hut until it starts to jackknife and I can't back it in anymore. Then I could grab the tongue with a 
a ball, a trailer ball on the forks. I could grab the receiver and then just pivot the mill into the building crossways like I want it. So I really see three options for how I can do this. And obviously you guys know how I am. You're gonna have a video in the next week or two where I'm trying different ways to get this set up in the building. Obviously the last alternative is leave it setting out by the pond and get a cover for the mill head. I don't really want to do that. I want to be able to mill in bad weather and be shaded from the heat and everything like that. So I'd really like to get it in the building. And hopefully before the end of the year, I have a full sawmill building built exclusively for this that I can drive the mill in one side, set it down, drive out the other side, and just, it's made for it. But I'm not going to go buy thousands of dollars of lumber to build that. I'm going to mill all the lumber to build that out of. And that's going to take me months to do because I mill one to two days a week, stacking up the lumber, and I'm going to start building with it. In the meantime, I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.